do V bars make any difference at all, or is it just a gimmick that is getting you to buy more products that you may or may not need from an archery company? So what I'm gonna do to test this is I'm gonna shoot here at 70 meters. I will shoot with just a long rod and then shoot with a full blown Olympic setup and see how much of a difference the groups downrange actually make. I've already done a little variation on this video already where I compared and contrasted shooting no stabilizers at all with a full blown Olympic setup just like this one here with a long rod and V bars. And I shot at 70 meters just like I'm going to be doing today and it made a considerable difference. I will have links in the description below and a card at the top up there to that video in case you haven't seen it yet. So what I'm gonna do different in this video that I didn't in the past was use the Mantis X8 which helps measure the actual movement of the bow and uh, give a stability score for each setup. And just because I didn't in the previous video, I'm going to get a stability score with just the bow itself with no stabilizers on it. So that way we can have a bit of a baseline measurement there to understand how much of a difference putting a long rod on and a full blown Olympic setup makes. I wanna shoot one end to warm up and make sure I'm sighted in here at 70 meters. Turn the camera there so you can actually see the target down range. Cool, so the Mantis is working correctly. That one, in case you were wondering, was a stability score of 94.6. I haven't used the Mantis enough to know how good that is or not, but that's what it was on that one. That was a 92.1. That was a 93.2. 95. That was a 95.4. That was definitely my fault. I pushed that one up right at the end and the, the bow and the sight and everything moved up right at the end. All right, so I'd say I'm relatively sighted in. I'm hitting moderately high, but not very high. That last shot was a 95 and a half. So somewhere in the 92 to 95 range is basically what the mantis told me as far as the stability is concerned so it'll be interesting to see how that changes with the different setups the first one like i said is i'm going to start with no stabilizers at all and we'll see probably a considerable difference on the stability score itself now as i'm taking these stabilizers off if you are interested in picking up a set of these stabilizers these are the ramrod ultra v4s i'll have links in the description below for where you can get ramrods those are affiliate links, so it does genuinely help this channel out if you click on those before you shop. Ramrods has many different types of stabilizers at various different price points, and they have pretty good guides as far as which type of stabilizer you should actually buy, depending on how many weights you run and your experience level. Stabilizers are definitely one of those things that you can buy once, cry once, get something that's really good to start with, and you really won't need to upgrade it over the years unless something else comes out that has really cool features or a different color or something that you might want down the road. Uh, but definitely stabilizers are one of those things that you can get like a, a long rod by itself and then add V-bars down the road if you're on a budget. Okay, now let me get the Mantis back connected again here. All right, so now like I said, this is just to get a stability score, but it will give you an idea too, as far as a baseline is concerned, how much of a difference all of these make. And also, I will be doing this with a barebow weight, barebow style weight versus an Olympic style setup too. It's just hard because there's so many different variations. And I wanna try all sorts of different variations and it allows me to kind of break them out into separate videos. So that will be coming, just give me a little bit of time. It's so hard to execute good shots because it's so far 
out of stability. Yeah, that's huge. 80.3 on stability, a big difference there. You can just see the actual movements are just way bigger and all over the place. Won't get any better from here. Now that one was nice and quick and just behaved. Stability score was still 84.6, so nowhere near as stable as with a full-blown setup on, but I expected that. Eighty-three point six on that one. Basically, what I'm seeing is my sight pin moving around extremely erratically all over the place. It definitely tends to float more because I don't have as much mass weight holding me down. But I would say on average, the sight is probably staying within the seven or eight ring, kind of moving all over. It was in the gold maybe 50-ish percent of the time. It's hard because I don't really have a sight pin. I just have a ring here today. Uh, so I'm looking through the ring to the middle. And so I don't have a super precise gauge as to how much the pin itself is, like the central point of the pin is moving. But I would say it's definitely spending most of its time in the red. Eighty six point one. A lot of them are high as far as the sight pin. It just wants to move up. Again, there's no mass weight to keep me down, and my whole bow setup is optimized for a stabilizer setup. So it's expected to, for it to be not as good, uh, but it's very hard to manage. And as you can see, you know, I have a similar main group, but it still is moving around a little bit more than the other shots and stuff is coming loose on my bow that never comes loose, um, you know, just because there's nothing to absorb the excess vibration. The bow is way more unhappy and overall is way, way less stable. I mean, the stability score again is 10 plus points down from where it was with a full blown setup. So, what I so before I go pull arrows, I'm going to take this long rod off and put just the long rod on the bow without V-bars, without the V-bar bracket. I'm not going to change anything else. This is actually something very similar to what I originally started shooting archery with. I started with just a long rod and a back weight to kind of get some balance to the system. And this is, you know, very typical of a very beginner setup, just a long rod with a bit of weight at the end. It'll be interesting to see what happens with the groups, the stability, and the reaction of the bow, of course. So I'm gonna go get the arrows and we'll do it again. So let's get the Mantis back connected again. This is really annoying, personally speaking, that you have to reconnect this thing over and over again and have to recalibrate it each time it gets back connected. It's just kind of a pain in the butt, if you ask me. First end here, just stabilizer. In regards to how that one held, it was actually quite stable. It moved a lot, but once it settled, it didn't move nearly much at all. I don't know what the stability score is yet, and the impact is in the middle, so that's good. But it's interesting that what I felt there, the main difference is how quickly the actual system is stable or still. So that one, the stability score was 93, so very similar to the full-blown setup but it is not very happy in regards to how quickly it settles down. It takes forever, relatively speaking, compared to an Olympic setup for it to become still enough to where I feel comfortable to execute the shot personally. I mean, you can't really argue with two arrows stacked on top of each other like that. But this is just a start. That one, the stability score was a 90. That was an 
89 and a half. So it's similar, definitely not as bad as no stabilizers so far. Vibration wise, the bow is very happy, especially compared to no stabilizers. There's very little vibration. It's very quiet, 93.3 on that one. That one, the stabilizer, I mean the sight, it wanted to move off. When it's still, it's not moving outside the 10 ring at all. But on that one, it was wanting to drift considerable amount to the right. But because of the lighter mass weight of the bow, I feel like maybe I could make an adjustment quicker to get it to stabilize a little bit faster. Maybe. All right, so that one was a 90.9. So average was somewhere in the 90 range. Definitely got a little bit higher up into the 93 range, but was somewhere in that 90 range for stability. Aiming, like I said, just doesn't settle as fast. So if I could give you a visual representation, if say this is my aiming pattern, right? As I pick up the bow with this, it's like as I'm drawing the bow back, getting into anchor, kind of settling in, the bow's just still kind of moving and then it steadies and then I can fire, right? Whereas with the V-bar setup, I draw back, I hit anchor and it's there. It's not moving. It doesn't take long to settle down. It just stops moving really, really fast, settles right away. Even if it's not in the middle, it's just like stops, put it in the middle, fire, as opposed to Okay, now I can, boom, right? So that's as far as visually, as a visual representation, what I'm seeing, the difference between a full-blown Olympic setup and just a long rod. So I'm gonna go get them, we'll put the full-blown setup back on, and I'll measure the arrows down range as far as the spread of the group, height and width, and get an idea if it changes at all with a stabilizer setup. Okay, so unfortunately, I had to take an important phone call and <laughs> I've cooled down completely after an hour now that I have the full stabilizer set up on. As you can see, the lighting is completely changed around here. The wind is picked up and so hopefully this is still going to be a good comparison after the first end. I still have another couple ends to do anyway, so hopefully it all works out. Now the wind is going to be moving those arrows. That was a 96.3 stability. I think one of the highest stabilities so far, if not the highest. Not the greatest shot. 92.4 stability though, despite that. So on the sight picture on that one, it was dancing around from left to right gold occasionally would dip out into the red but generally speaking stayed within the gold again an hour break is not helping here but seeing a dramatically more stable stability score does make a difference 94.6 on that Five point one on that one. Push that one a little left. Ninety three point eight on that one. Like I said, the bow just stops moving right away once I come to full draw, and it just stays there. That is the main difference between just stabilizers and V bars. That was a 93.4 on that one. So just looking at the groups, very, very similar, with the exception of that high left eight there. Um, that one, the wind caught the arrow. I could see it turn sideways in my peripheral because it's such a bright vein and knock going down range. And I did see it turn left as it came out of the bow. 
but overall groups are fairly similar there. So I'm going to do this again now that I've taken that hour break, go back to stabilizer only, and then do this full setup again, and hopefully we'll have a much better idea as to what's going on here. So I measured the group and the spread down there, and essentially from the stabilizer only to the full Olympic setup, they were roughly the same size group, uh, with the exception of they essentially mirrored themselves. So the height was better on one and the left to right spread was better on the other, but the amount that it was different was roughly the same. And so it was almost the same size group. Go back to the stabilizer only. Four on that one stability wise. Overall the bow just seems like it's a little happier actually the sound of it uh, with just the stabilizer for whatever reason. I mean you got the side rods independent quite far out relative to the system and they do have a lot more movement going on that way in my testing in the past that's what I've seen the more in line you can get the rods the happier the vibration dampening but it's definitely like just it's not stable it's all over the place that was a 90.6 Although, didn't shoot that one the best. You could really hear a change in the bow, at least I could. 90.7 stability. don't know why that first one went so low. Overall, definitely the group on this one was not as good as the full-blown Olympic setup with V-bars on it. So one more end, we'll do this again and see that last stability was 91.3. So still an average of like 90 point something, 90.9 or 91-ish with just the, v the stabilizer on, but with the full Olympic setup with the V-bars, it's definitely in like the 94 range on average. I've gotten as high as 96 with the V-bars and as high as 94 with just the stabilizer, but I've had a lot more 90s with just the stabilizer and a lot more 94s with the V-bar setup. So we'll see if that holds true next end. That was a 94.6 stability. The bow just settles so much faster this way. It's also a little lazier on the aiming. Um, so I might mess around with a difference in balance, maybe more front weight, maybe overall just less mass weight too, just to see if it can improve the way the bow feels and uh, reacts to my input. Ninety two point six. Ninety three point two. I have noticed too as I'm shaking from you know being a little tired and also not fully warmed up here, the sight pin doesn't move nearly as much when I have the full setup on it. It wants to stay put a little bit better. Ninety-three point one. Ninety-two point eight on that one. And ninety-two point three on that one. So group as well 
up and down due to that last arrow not the greatest but definitely in the better range of what I had been shooting just looking at the drawing I have on the upper left hand of the target the best left to right group and the second best up and down group basically is what it looks like so overall uh, V bars on the bow makes a difference in the group it's much less of a difference compared to from no stabilizers to stabilizers as expected of course but overall the stability is way higher with the v-bars from roughly a 90 to a 94 ish average give or take uh, as according to the mantis you know i don't know how that's measuring or what it's actually calculating but it's at least showing a difference there now with no stabilize no stabilizer at all it was in the 80 to 82 range so it was much much lower and way way worse um, and also I saw that result in regards to the aiming pattern so what I'm seeing in the actual mantis of stability is showing me the same thing that I'm seeing as well but what the mantis isn't showing is how quickly it settles as the shot is going on so as I come into anchor with just the stabilizer it's kind of still moving a little bit it has to do with a lot more of how I'm drawing the bow back and the pre-shot as I'm getting into full draw now Maybe I can use that as a training aid to potentially get more consistent to get to full draw. So that way I'm a little bit more consistent from shot to shot. That could be a training aid or a training tool to try and see how that goes. So I would say based on what I see, what I feel as far as how quickly it stabilizes and what I saw on the target down range, I could say that V bars are not just big stabilizer telling you how to think and feel. They actually do make a difference and they do actually um, settle in a lot faster when you come to full draw. That is part of why I have them angled down ever so slightly. So they do in fact hold more stable. They do in fact stabilize quicker and the groups seem to match as well. With some extra tuning and optimization of the bow with just a stabilizer, probably could make that group better. Probably could make the stability score better too but I don't think it's gonna improve how quickly the bow aims well and is good to go. Now, as far as what it would do in the wind, not so, not so sure there. I think that with V-bars, again, because it stabilizes quicker when you come to full draw, if you got blown off target, it would stabilize quicker or allow you to get back in the center of the target and it be stable and not wavering a lot, probably a lot more so than just a stabilizer itself. So I think overall it'd probably be much better with the full setup. So this kind of thing is pretty fun for me to do. I, like I said, will do one with bare bow weight only versus Olympic style stabilizer setup. Get an idea of what it does with the stability, get an idea of what it does with the aiming as well as the grouping downrange. That video will come in the future. And so if you're interested in checking that one out, please do subscribe and hit that notification bell down below. So that way you get notified when I do upload that video. It'll take some time for me to get into and to do as well because I just don't have a bare bow weight here that I want to shoot on this bow to show you. That'll be coming soon. Now, like I said, if you're interested in checking out these ramrods or any of the other uh, pieces of equipment that I use in this video, I'll have links in the description below. I just did a review on these Ultra V4s as well. Also links in the description below and a card at the top up there in case you want to see it. And uh, yeah, tell me what you think. Let me know below what you think about this video or even the one with no stabilizer and seeing the data and the difference between all these different setups. If you have any more suggestions of things you want me to try and play with just for fun, please let me know because this kind of stuff is very enjoyable to make. And I also like to do these kind of videos because they're just fun. It's fun to do some tinkering and playing with and I'm gonna try maybe a full-blown Korean setup with a five inch extension, 30 inch long rod, a lot of weight forward, but still with V-bars and just see how that goes just for the fun of it as well. Hey, if you like this video, consider sharing it. Genuinely, that helps this channel grow. I don't operate any other social media and I rely on you to help spread the word about the channel. Also, make sure you hit that subscription button down below. Again, that does help this channel grow. You get notified when I upload new content. I'm trying to do it fairly regularly. I've got a lot going on behind the scenes that I'm not quite ready to share. And when I am, I will of course do so, but that's why my uploads are a little bit infrequent as of late. And consider supporting this channel. Many different links in the description below. I can't thank my supporters enough. I wouldn't be able to produce this content, at least not to this level without you. So thanks.